Hello class, this is going to be a presentation on the Silk Road um, based on the content from the final section of our textbook on China. So yeah, the Silk Road is a very important uh, concept to learn about, you know, within ancient China. Is that water? Nah. All right, so what was the Silk Road? The Silk Road was a, a network of trade routes that spanned from China to the Mediterranean Sea, which we can see on this map here. Um, China being over here, the Mediterranean Sea being all the way over here. So first question we're asking is how far did the Silk Road stretch? So it stretched more than 4,000 miles across Asia from uh, Laoyang and Chanan in China to the Mediterranean ports like Antioch in Syria. So went all the way across China to the Mediterranean Sea. And the Silk Road connected the Han and Roman empires. So how did the Silk Road come to be? Well, as the Han Empire expanded through military conquest westward, the Silk Road became possible, the reason being that the Han army pushed nomadic peoples out of northwestern China, which opened up trade routes to the west. All right, so who was uh, Zhang Jian? So uh, Zhang Qian was a Chinese explorer that became known as the father of the Silk Road. Uh, in 138 BCE, the Han Emperor sent Zhang Qian and 100 men to form alliances with Western peoples against the Huns, who were China's northern enemy. So Zhang Qian was captured and escaped twice by the Huns uh, and was unsuccessful in forming alliances. Um, but there was a silver lining in Zhang Qian's failure. He learned about many cultures in the West, including Persia, Syria, India, and Rome. And then years later, Zhang Qian went on a second journey west and he learned of a powerful horse unavailable to the Chinese. So this discovery, in addition to his discovery of grapes, which would have been good for wine and stuff, led to the establishment of trade relationships with the Central Asian peoples. All right, so why was it called the Silk Road? So silk became the most desirable product along the trade routes. Um, silk is a fiber used to make cloth. It's strong but at the same time, it's warm, light, and soft. Um, at first, the Chinese were the only people that knew how to produce silk from the cocoons of silkworms. Um, the production of silk was a huge secret in China, and so secret, in fact, that revealing the process was punishable by death. Our next question is, who did, sil who did China trade silk to? Uh, so many cultures, many cultures valued silk, but the Romans were at the top of the list. Uh, silk was a luxury item in Rome, and even the wealthiest could only keep a patch of silk stitched to their white togas. Um, the Romans traded gold and glassware for silk, um, and the Chinese didn't, they didn't know how the method for producing glass, so that would have made glassware desirable to them. Our next question, how did travelers move along the Silk Road? Uh, traders did not travel the entire length of the Silk Road. Uh, they moved between stops and goods changed hands many times before, their meeting, before meeting their destination. Uh, the Silk Road was split into two major parts, the Eastern Silk Road and the Western Silk Road. So people wouldn't, tra wouldn't travel the whole way. They would go a certain distance, stop, ex give the, you know, trade their goods, and then go back. Right, so it'd be like stop and go like this. What was traveling? What was traveling like on the Eastern Silk Road, the eastern part? So the Eastern Silk Road connected Luoyang to Kashgar. Um, from Luoyang, the Silk Road went west along the Gobi Desert to uh, Dunhuang. Uh, this part of the route was protected by the Great Wall in the north. 
um, from Dunhuang, there were two choices through the through the Taklamakan Desert. So they could have gone on the northern route, which had a few oases, including Kucha. Um, but bandits threatened travelers along the northern route, so that was a negative. Um, sandstorms could bury travelers in sand at any time. Um, and mirages often lured travelers off the main path to their deaths. Um, travelers protected themselves by forming long caravans of camels. So even a thousand camels lined up, and you know, traveling through the desert. And there was a special kind of camel, the Bactrian camel, which have a second row of eyelashes and nostrils that can keep out blowing sand, which is uh, you know beneficial. And they could also carry enough food and water to keep travelers alive. So here I'm going to show you the route that they would have taken from China to Kashgar, right on the eastern half of the Silk Road. So uh, what they would have done is from uh, Luoyang, um, they would have gone west through the Gobi Desert, right? Um, right there's the Gobi. And what was nice about this is because they had, they had the Great Wall protecting them in the north, right? So along that path, you know, there's some form of protection from northern invaders. Um, from Dunhuang, there were two choices through the Taklamakan Desert they could take. They could go north um, through here, or they could go south here. Um, so the northern edge of the Taklamakan or the southern edge of the Taklamakan. Um, the northern, like I said before, had a few oases like this one in Kucha. So there would have, be wa there would have been water and resources there. Um, but yeah, um, if they took the Northern route though, right, there was the threat of, uh, bandits, which was mentioned in the previous slide. Um, and any point anywhere, you know, in the desert, there was a threat of uh, sandstorms. Um, so yeah, and then eventually they would hit Kashgar, which is the midway point of the Silk Road. All right. What goods were exchanged along the Eastern Silk Road? Uh, silk was an ideal good to carry because it was light and valuable. Um, so they could pack a lot of it. The Chinese also traded fine dishware, which we know, know of today as China. Uh, but they also traded ornaments, jewelry, and cast iron products. Uh, the Chinese valued horses, you know, those big horses, jade, furs, and gold. And India traded cotton, spices, pearls, which came from oysters, and ivory, which came from elephant tusks. Uh, our next question, what was traveling like on the Western Silk Road? So the Western Silk Road connected Kashgar to Antioch, in the, which is a city, a port on the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, westward travelers often carried goods using yaks instead of camels, right? They were more suited for the, for the mountainous regions. Um, the journey west began through the Pamir Mountains. Uh, travelers often experienced headaches, dizziness, and ringing in the ears caused by a lack, lack of oxygen from the thin air. So this all altitude sickness, right? So that's a, um, could be pretty severe. I've watched videos on YouTube of people that go on hikes that have attempted say doing part of, uh, um, a hike in, in Nepal or other, maybe the, um, the largest mountain in Africa or whatever, and, and couldn't do it because they got sick. Um, the mountain passes were narrow and dangerous, leading to many deaths. Uh, the path continued through the fertile valleys across Iranian Plateau and through Mesopotamia. Uh, Tesafun was an important stop located on the Tigris River. Um, and then lastly, the route went through the Syrian desert where travelers were threatened by wolves, lions, snakes, and vultures. And so here I'm going to show the Western um, route they took, they took on this map. So they started in Kashgar, which you can see with the yak here. Um, and they would have traveled west through the premier mountains, which were dangerous for a number of reasons, but, you know, including the altitude sickness mentioned before, but also the, the mountain passes could be narrow and dangerous and led to many deaths. Um, from there, they would have gone through the fertile valleys of 
Afghanistan, right? This kind of area you see with no mountains. They would have passed the Caspian Sea and the Iranian Plateau. They would have gone through Mesopotamia and ended up in Tesafun, which was an important city um, in the western part of the Silk Road. And then finally, they would have gone through the Syrian desert, which was mentioned they would have had to potentially cross those dangerous animals uh, until they event eventually ended up in Antioch. And then from there, uh, their goods could be shipped on boats throughout the Mediterranean. Uh, what goods were exchanged along the Western Silk Road? So traders from Egypt, Arabia, and Persia brought perfumes, cosmetics, and carpets. Uh, the most valued items from Rome were glass products such as trays, vases, necklaces, and small bottles. Um, the Chinese also prized asbestos, which could be used to make a fireproof cloth. And today, asbestos is, is, can be very toxic. Um, and they also prized coral, which could be used to treat illnesses back then. They believe that if it, you put it on a sick person and it lost its color, um, it showed they were sick. And lastly, we have cultural diffusion. So cultural diffusion is the process of exchanging ideas, knowledge, and goods between cultures. Um, so like today, you see McDonald's in Asian countries, that's, that's a form of cultural diffusion. Uh, eventually, the Chinese learned glass blowing and the Romans learned how to make silk, so it wasn't necessary to trade the stuff anymore. They just made it themselves. Um, foods and spices were exchanged between cultures. So like grapes, cucumbers, figs, pomegranates, walnuts, chives, sesame, and coriander came to China from the West, and then the West was able to import oranges, peaches, pears, and different flowers from the East. And then when I think of cultural diffusion in the Silk Road, I think of Buddhism, the spread of Buddhism from India um, to China, right? You've got travelers, you've got missionaries on, you know, traveling, spreading their ideas. You've got, and then after the, after it spreads, say people from China would then go to India and, you know, try to get important texts from uh, Buddhist temples and bring it back to their country so that they could worship. So our summary here, in this lesson, we learned how the Silk Road promoted the exchange of goods and ideas. All right. Thank you.